Hello, Max Rempel is here. Today is January 26, 2018. Today I will speak a little bit about the morphogenic field. The idea of the morphogenic field is very similar to the idea of aura and the idea of etheric field. These are just coming uh, from different spiritual and scientific traditions and are slightly different in function. And aura is something that some people see, some healers and spiritually developed, developed people see around your body. And usually the color of the aura corresponds to your health state, your energy state, your mood, and uh, uh, the way you are designed and the way you are spiritually uh, active. The idea of etheric body or etheric field comes from the also from the Eastern tradition and uh, that tradition states that there are different vibrations, different levels of the vibration and etheric body is the body which is immediately beyond the physical. It is the closest body to the physical. So the physical body is supported by a blueprint of the etheric body which uh, is an interface, which is another vibration interface between the physical body and the rest of spiritual uh, bodies. And other spiritual bodies in, uh, are, they have various names from different translations and different traditions, but some of them are, one of them is astral, and one of them is mental, one of them is uh, related to God, and there are several several more levels, but basically they resp uh, correspond to different functions uh, of their functions and the vibrations. Say, mm, physical is obviously for doing physical work, uh, emotional body for doing emotional work, mental body for doing mental work. Um, I don't remember the name, but the body who is responsible for your life path and fate. And there is a body which is closer to God, uh, responsible for um, the functions related to their uh, to the functions of God. So, um, morphogenic field is responsible for creating your body, physical, creating your physical body, and uh, giving it a shape. So, morph. It sounds Greek, so morph is on one of the ancient languages, either Greek or Latin would be the shape. So it sounds Greek, so morphogenic meaning creating the shape. So the field which creates the shape of the body is called morphogenic. And uh, the nature of this field is not well defined, but it may include both physical fields, meaning the fields which are easily measurable by uh, human devices such as electromagnetic field and, and such, sound waves as such, physical, and also non-physical, which uh, I call etheric, but some people call it torsion fields and subtle energies and bioenergies, and most common name for those fields is now uh, in common language is called energy. In quotation marks. It's not the physical energy but the mystical energy. This, they all similar nature but some of them are detectable and some of them with physical devices, with modern electronic devices and some of them are not. So um, to be more specific in addition to morphogenic field which is creating the shape there is also uh, this the function of that field which is supporting the shape and if it is uh, supporting the shape if, if you're already an adult you don't have to create it again, it's, you have to support it. So, the name for that field is called morphostatic. Uh, basically, keeping the shape constant in a static state. But morphogenic is more popular. There is also a name morphogenetic field, uh, which is, uh, which is the, just a variation of that. But morphogenic is more common. It was formulated by a Russian exactly 100 years ago in, in his publications, Alexander Gurvich, and he had a laboratory who, which uh, did some experiments to, to actually measure that field, 
and they, they, he figured out since uh, the technology wasn't there to measure a field from a living developing organism you need another organism which would sense it so uh, biological is measured through biological so he used uh, some growing plants as uh, a source of morphogenic field and uh, east culture on, on dishes to grow in East culture on dishes to measure the strength. So the mar when morphogenic field was around, the East grew faster. So that was the way to de detect it. So biological uh, fields were de detected using biological objects or biological living things, biological entities. Um, so that was picked up by others and the idea was initially published in German so gradually it uh, spilled from the German culture German science to the world science and I just recently discovered that Terence McKenna uh, was was pretty much aware and uh, took it in his uh, worldview the idea of morphogenic field and obviously Sheldrake is now the most popular and the most profound teacher and experimental scientist and a philosopher who uh, works around and uh, substantiates the science around the morphogenic field. In biology, uh, there are only a few, but almost no one is using that term, it, because it is uh, esoteric in many ways. It is esoteric. So people uh, may be aware of it, but they use the term electromagnetic fields and waves. And, but uh, some of the scientists might be aware of the idea, but they don't usually mention it in scientific papers because it is uh, considered to be prohibited. It's considered to be prohibited by the scientific establishment. So there is a, a pretty good body of literature on the effects of electromagnetic fields and the role of electromagnetic fields in communication between the cells and on uh, effects of electromagnetic fields on health a substantial body of literature and even more theoretical work when i say substantial it means there is there are good well well established experiments demonstrating the the roles of electromagnetic fields but compared to the mainstream science, which is focused on pharmaceuticals, it is a, a small amount of experience because they are not funded by, um, not well funded. So recently there are a few first grants funded in, uh, in the States on that topic. Usually it's related topics. It is uh, therapy topics or basic research topics, but at least there is some initial funding in terms of electromagnetic biology, fundamental biology or applied biology, meaning uh, discovering the principles using simple systems or uh, trying to apply electromagnetic therapy to, uh, uh, to some more complex systems to show that we can eventually uh, do the therapy of, the, of people. Uh, in addition, there is a there are few tools in medical practice which are on borderline. They basically are either accepted or almost accepted. Uh, one of them is um, TENS, TENS, Transcutaneous Electric Nerve Stimulation. And it is routinely used in physical therapy by chiropractors, and it is approved, and it is around for I say maybe over 50 years. It doesn't improve much, but it has the basics. It is, it use, it is using electricity to, uh, to heal. Mm -hmm. It's very primitive, it's just frequencies and pulses without much knowledge, it's just empirical. They found that if you take 10 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz electronated current and pulse it at 100 hertz, it gives you relaxation and pain relief and uh, reducing reduction of inflammation and helps healing so they just use it 
Ultrasound therapy is not well uh, established, but mm, you can find ultrasound massa massage instruments, very simple ones, and they are allowed, they are uh, sold easily without prohibitions. And there is, uh, and also ultrasound therapy devices are very simplistic. It is just three kilohertz sound transmitted through uh, just a metal a plastic head. Uh, magnetic therapy devices give you simple pulses at uh, various frequencies. Uh, they, I don't think they have been approved, but they, they, they're not prohibited. They, they, are, they are around. And they're also very simplistic, just a simple frequency. And uh, usually low frequencies are good, like once per second and once per three seconds, something like that, just a pulse of magnetic. If, if you pay attention, electric and magnetic are similar fields, but they're not the same. So either pass electric current, alternated electric current, or send a magnetic pulse. So these are two different things. Like you know, electric is what you plug in your phone in, and their magnetic is like, you can have a magnet in a compass. So these are different fields, but they're connected to each other. When electric field moves, when electric charge accelerates, it produces a magnetic field. And when magnetic field moves or changes, uh, if there are any conductors around, like your skin, then uh, you induce electricity, electric current in your, in your body. So if you just turn, because you are within the area of magnetic fields, it will produce some electric currents in your body. So, so magnetism is around all the time. And obviously, you know, your, your molecules are magnetic and electric. Your nerves are electric. So there is a lot of electromagnetic, a lot of electromagnetic activity within you. But as I said, uh, I believe that morphogenic field is not limited by electromagnetic or sound or gravity. There is more to it. There is something which is unmeasurable by simple electronic devices of modern times. So among the scientists who study uh, the electromagnetic phenomena in, uh, in life is Stuart Hamerov. I highly recommend Stuart Hamerov. There is a lot of his talks, excellent talks, well pronounced, well thought through, and wonderful science, Stuart Hamerov. With what I understand of his stuff, I don't understand completely, but with what I understand, I agree. A hundred percent. I don't see anything wrong. Like he, he made some minor mistakes uh, in chemistry, just tiny minor, which, which, which I understand. But uh, it, it's it's an, it's not related to the, his main ideas. Uh, main ideas, I agree, hundred percent. I don't understand the the physics part, the quantum physics. Uh, it's a big, especially when it comes to the ma mathematics. It's, uh, it's it's beyond what my experience, my expertise, but. When it is chemistry, molecular biology, or um, morphogenic field and esoterics, he is, he is right to the point. So, so one of his uh, main um, points is a relationship between time, quantum uncertainty, quantum, yeah, quantum uncertainty of Schrodinger, and uh, the consciousness. Uh, he explains how human consciousness uh, collapses certain uncertainties and that makes it move through time and the rest of the nature is also conscious but it is not dragged through time as we are dragged through time so our consciousness has to move through time and theirs doesn't have to and I think that's that's a super uh, even if it is not true it is a great step forward something like that should be true that explains the nature of why we are conscious and why we are moving through time. So it is digging in the right place. Maybe the details could be like improved, but I think that uh, he's the only one who digs in the right place explaining the relationship between consciousness, time, and electromagnetic phenomena. What is missing there is obviously the non-electromagnetic phenomena like etheric phenomena, but that is hard to, hard to study, so I think He's doing the best we could, we could. So, the science of electro what what is what is generating the morphogenic field? 
So I, my understanding is that DNA plays a huge role in generating morphogenic field. Hamerov also mentioned that, so he's, he was there first. He was uh, writing about it even in 80s and 90s, so he was there first. I, I cannot take the credit for, for that. But his focus is on microtubules, and I think it's, he's correct on that as well. So what's the difference between DNA and microtubules? Um, DNA is a complex polymer with four letters containing the sequence. And that sequence is, is our inherited sequence. It's pretty much fixed. So DNA has a spot double helix structure. So it's a different chemistry. And it is within the nucleus, and it is inherited from cell to cell, from organism to organism. Um, but there is electromagnetic currents within the DNA. So macrotubules are structures similar in shape and size to DNA, maybe a little bigger, but uh, they also spiral. But they don't have that uh, four letters. They have only one letter repeated over and over, which is tubulin. So chemically, it's a little different. Chemically, macrotubules are a little different, but they have the same property of electric conductance. And they have the same property of, um, have same chemical properties which are having this magical molecule containing a hexagon and pentagon bound together. It's called mm, purine or purine like molecules. And they're aromatic and they have uh, magic properties. They um, uh, form. Uh, unified pi electron cloud. So they create a, a distributed electron cloud in, uh, in, the, in the assembly. If, it is a, if, the, if the assembly is periodic or semi-periodic, then it creates a unified electron cloud, which is protected from the outside water by hydrophobic property of the, of the structure. Let me give you an analogy. It's like a waterproof cell phone. Inside, you have electronics with electric currents directed to make a complex electric scheme to have oscillations and send the waves out. But it is surrounded by watertight seal, so the water doesn't get inside and doesn't damage it. So it, does, it cannot short circuit the electric wires. So same is DNA and microtubules. They have the same property. They are hydrophobic. They repel water, and inside of them there is a, a system of purine-like heterocycles, six, six, a hexagon and pentagon. And it's again, it's pronounced by Hamerov, so it's from Hamerov. But I think it is a great breakthrough, a great breakthrough, understanding that purine-like molecules are key to consciousness and morphogenic field. So, um, inside of those structures, uh, there is certain periodicity. In, uh, in uh, microtubules, it's, it's um, uniform periodicity. In, in DNA, it is encoded periodicity, which is uh, the sequence, the patterns of these heterocycles are uneven. It is defined by the language of the DNA. And within those, there is an, a unified electron cloud, which is an interface to consciousness and to morphogenic field. So an interface meaning be interface between the physical and non-physical, between chemistry and waves. Yeah, a same example, the phone takes energy from your charger and then sends, sends the waves out. And then uh, similar things happen with uh, DNA possibly, it's not proven yet, that DNA take is charged by chemical reactions. So chemical reactions give it in a, the energy. So it uses the energy of your food, for example. And then um, use, uses this energy to send out the, the messages and produce the morphogenic field. I believe the microtubules, which are outside, largely outside of the nucleus. There are some inside, but mostly it's outside of the nucleus. Not the nucleus of the atom, but the nucleus of the cell. 
So it is uh, the nucleus contains DNA. Um, cellular nucleus contains DNA and chromosomes and, and this stuff. So inside of the nucleus there are DNA and somehow it is electrically tied up, tied together with outside microtubules and together they create a, a well architecturally designed network which, you, uh, which creates uh, a transmitter, a transmitter and receiver for, for the waves which are electromagnetic and possibly etheric waves. And altogether it creates a morphogenic field. So the morphogenic field is created not by one cell, but the whole organism. So initially, like in, uh, when you are the first cell, when you are just uh, the, the egg uh, fertilized by a sperm, it's one cell. But then at that point, I think the field is, might be created by your mother. So your mother is uh, needed to help the first, the egg, to create that field. But then it starts developing, it becomes stronger, and then it creates its own field, using its own DNA. And um, it is a collectively interactive process. So the cells create the field, the field directs how the body grows, how the embryo develops, and then all together they create a new field. So it's, the field is developing the field develops as the cells develop. And now we have the body containing, I forgot the number, but it's like billions of cells. And about maybe a fraction of it is bacterial cells in, in the gut. So it's not only human cells, but also bacterial cells, good bacteria, which co-create, and also on the skin we have lots of good bacteria, which co-create the morphogenic field. So it's not only your human genome creating morphogenic field, but also the genomes of good bacteria living inside you and outside on the skin, which co-create the field. Keep in mind that the guts, it's not, it's not mixed together. It's either you, either your human cells or bacterial. So the, the bacteria live in a special isolated, insulated area. So they are inside of you, but they are not in your blood, not in your uh, they, have, they are in the area where the food is, so even the food passes through you, it's kind of inside, but it doesn't mix with you directly. There is a barrier which is uh, inner epithelium, uh, which separates your inner side, they separate the food tract from your, from your own cell, so it's never mixed together, unless you're sick, unless you have uh, an ulcer. Then they get in the blood and then you feel like really sick. So even the good bacteria are there, they are not, uh, they are not mixed together. They are still allocated in a separate area. So altogether you create the morphogenic field and obviously when uh, there are several of you, you create a mixed, the morphogenic fields interact and uh, they interact with the planet and um, collectively the humanity creates a morphogenic field. And as you might notice, the morphogenic field evolves very fast. Uh, possibly the genome evolves as well, pretty fast. And there, one of the tools for evolving the genome are viral infections, even bacterial infections, but mostly viral infections, which goes in your cells and might tweak here and there a few sequences. So, um, so possibly we evolved through all the, these frequent flus maybe are helping you and the humanity to evolve faster. So you can see that we evolve and our children become different than the, the parents. And also we become somewhat bigger, especially that is noticeable in America compared to, to Asia, right? Especially, you can notice it when you get Asian clothes, uh, they are designed for Asians and they even if they make them bigger, it doesn't fit uh, Americans well. So that's, you know, a cultural misalignment. But um, it's not only because there is more food. It is also because their morphogenic field and genetics adapts. And obviously, it's not only the size. It is the style of work 
and style of survival. Now, a lot of work is office work and a lot of work is pressing that mouse button. So, um, I think the humanity will evolve very fast to accommodate that as well. Also, the information age changes our, changes our behavior and through that changes our genetics. So, so we are, evolve, are evolving to accommodate social networks, computer social networks, Facebook, and reunite in a different way. And essentially, eventually, we will develop telepathy. And that would be reflected in the genome and morphogenic field. And that is all I wanted to say. The connection between microtubules, DNA, morphogenic field, and ascension. It's all pronounced. Thank you for listening and have a good day. Bye.